Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, just before we went for our break, we were looking at which scripture passage anyone remembers? Psalms 139, okay, verse 16, okay. And we also saw that uh, God has a blueprint for your life, okay. So even before we took our very first breath, God already knew the entire plan from beginning to the end. He's seen our lives. He knows the different stages. And um, he did not create us here by accident, but he has a purpose. So you're not a failure. You're not a disappointment. Um, you know, you're not unworthy, but God has great things in plan for you. So get excited and know that and begin to identify, ask God, he will reveal his plan and purpose, begin to do that. And then life will just get super exciting and super enjoyable. And you'll just be the happiest and joyous person on planet Earth. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, God has a dream for us. He's created us for a purpose. And not only that, we can say this with confidence that, you know, God did not create us simply just like that. He created us for a purpose. Uh, he has also designed you in such a way or the way that he's created you is he's created you to fulfill his plan and his purpose. Now, this mic is created for what? So when I speak into it, you know, it, 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 uh, it does what is function for it releases sound okay you can hear audibly what i'm saying can this be my uh, computer or my laptop no it does not have the it's not wired for that this is my laptop and this laptop is wired to function in a certain way it has functions to do certain things can this uh, laptop cook food for me no it's not does not have that function it's not wired so the way god designed us even the way god has designed us is to fulfill his plan and purpose now what do i mean when i say god has designed us to fulfill his plan and purpose what do i mean by that the way we are created god has created us to fulfill his plan and purpose what do i mean by that Which means in one way that when we are not following God's plan and purpose, or when we're not doing what God wants us to do, there is no joy, there is no satisfaction, there is no peace, there is no happiness, there is even no blessing. You can be at the wrong time, in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing, but God does not want and this. You will experience frustration, hopelessness. There will be no, uh, you know, there will be no expansion. There will be nothing good that is coming out of it. But when you are there in the right time, the right place, doing God's plan and purpose, I'm not saying everything is going to be smooth. Everything is going to go well. No, there are going to be struggles. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be mountains. Like I said, there are going to be devils that you have to fight. But there will be joy, there will be peace, there will come, there will be strength, and you will find the resources to help you cope through um, everything. Okay, so he has designed you to fulfill that, that the plan and purpose for your life. That is why each one of you are so nice. Aren't you happy? <laughs> I got only two smiles. That is why each one of you are so nice, each one of you are so great super so good why because god has designed you to fulfill his plan and purpose okay and um, look at what paul says in philippians the third chapter verse 12 philippians chapter 3 verse 12. not that i have already attained or i am already perfected but i press on that i may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Amen. Okay. So here, you know, Paul is saying that he's pressing on to take hold of what Jesus Christ has taken hold of him. Okay. So 
God has something for him. He's holding on to that. He's taking hold of what? That which Christ Jesus has taken hold of him. Okay. So there is that for which, for which Jesus has laid a hold of you. And there is something that you also have to take hold of that which God has planned and purpose for your life. So just like Paul, you also need to take hold. Take hold means what? Grasp. Take hold means understand. Take hold means know what is God's plan and purpose for your life. Take hold of it and run with it. So there is a purpose, a that for which God has taken hold of you. And what should be your response? What should be my response? Just like Paul, we need to take hold of that which Christ Jesus has taken hold of us. And what is making meaning of taking hold of means knowing, understanding, you know, holding on to what God's plan and purpose for your life is. Amen. Okay, tell your neighbor, wake up, take hold of what Jesus has taken hold of you. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's already awake. <laughs> okay. Okay, look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we, his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do what? To do some simple works, ordinary works, good works, which God just planned at this moment. What does it say? Which God has prepared beforehand. That means well before even the foundation or the creation of this world that we should walk in them. So here it says, who are we? In this verse, what does it say? Who are we? We are his workmanship. Okay, that means there is something God is doing. Workmanship means he's working on us. He is designed. He's you know, working on us to fulfill his plan and purpose, he's equipping us, strengthening us. So one of the things that God is doing now, he's working on each one of you, even as you are studying in the Bible college, he's preparing you for your ministry that you are going to do. So why is he doing whatever he is doing in our lives? Because he has good works, which he has planned beforehand that we should walk in. Them. So what is God working in you? He is working in you to do good works. Yes, he's working in you to do good works, which is already planned out for your uh, life. So what are some of the good works that God has already planned for your life? He has places that he wants you to go. He has people he wants you to meet. He has lives that he wants you to touch, and he has things that he wants you to do. So what are the good works that God has planned for you? He has places he wants you to go. He has people he wants you to meet. He, he has lives he wants you to touch, and he has great plans and purposes, things that he wants you to do. So hence, living life is actually very, very simple. Why is living life very simple? Why do I say living your life is very simple? Why do I say that? Why do I say living life is very simple? Sorry? Normal life is very simple, yes. Why is it simple? Why is living our lives as believers very simple? If we follow the um, the law of uh, laws, uh, it is simple simple to uh, live life. If you follow God's commands and laws, yes, it's very simple to live our lives. Okay, we have some answers from our uh, in-person students. God. Because God has already planned everything for us. Thank you, Charles. Yes. 
when we obey God, Lucy says, Daniel says it's simple because we just need to follow his plans. Yes. Angeline says it's, it's already predestined. Um, that is a little tricky to say theologically because predestination is something that has gone very out of place from what uh, what Bible has to say. It's not that God, yes, he's already predestined means he's already planned, but it's not something that, uh, you know, um, he's, he's not a partial God in, in, in terms of planning things, uh, which he shows partiality, but we'll just leave that for the time moment the time being but yes he's already planned things for us we can see, put it that way Sanjay says we are fearfully and wonderfully made by God to fulfill his plan and purposes for us in this world yes thank you all for the answers it's very simple life is very simple because all we need to do is like Oliver says just find out what God's plan for our life is and just walk in it or just live it simple as that okay you don't have to go about like a blind man trying to find out what god wants me to do where i need to go what my life is what what is in 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 in, in sun for my life you just have to follow god's plan so you don't have to wake up in the morning and read your horoscope or don't run from one astrologer to another astrologer i'm not saying that we should do that you know we don't do it because we have god's word with us God's word is our guide. It leads us. It guides us. Okay. All we need to know is what's God's plan for our life and do it. And that is as simple as living our lives every day. Okay. Look at what 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 says. Can somebody else read? Can you just give the mic? Somebody else wants to read? 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. It's in your book. Page 3. Can you please read a little uh, louder and closer? Oh, yeah. God and fulfilling His purpose. This is one. an awesome truth. We are living not for our own. Purpose. Purpose is one purpose. Sorry, get truth. Uh, this is there's an in-person student who's reading. So okay, go ahead. Yeah. Who has saved us and called called us? With, called us. Called us with a holy cal, uh, calling. calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in christ jesus before time began before time began so god yeah. saved us and he's called us to what kind of a calling holy calling not according to our works not how good we are how talented we are how um, smart we are how uh, uh, you know excellent we are in doing things no but he's called us according to his own purpose and grace which was given to us in christ jesus before time began okay so god this verse says that god saved us so even salvation is the work of God. Of course, it has our choice we made, but it's the work of God. And who has called us? God has called us. For what has he called us? Not for eternal retirement. You know, sometimes we feel, hey, I've received salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to heaven. I'll sit back and relax, earn some money just to feed myself, feed my family. No, it's not for eternal retirement. Um, God has saved us and called us according to his purpose. Yes, Supradeep has a quest has his hand up. Yes. Supra Supradeep Das. You have a question? You've raised your hand up. You can unmute your mic and ask your question. Okay, so we have been called by God to do good things, okay? And along with his calling, what has God given us? What does this verse say? Look at your Bibles. He's given us grace. He's given us grace. So God always gives us grace. What is grace? Blessing? What is grace? Uh, Sister Grace is immense, immenseness of God's love. 
Thank you, Gertrude. Immenseness of God's love. Divine favor. Grace is divine enablement. That means enabling you, strengthening you to do what he has asked you to do. Grace also means divine empowerment. That means God is empowering you, giving you the power, the strength. And as Daniel and our in-person students said, it's divine favor. So grace is three things. We will learn this in detail in this book. It's divine enablement. That means enabling you, strengthening you. Empower. It's divine empowerment, empowering you, and also divine favor. So when God gives us something, he also gives us the grace to fulfill his plan and purpose. Okay, He's giving us the grace that we need to fulfill what he has planned and purpose for our um, lives. Okay. So, you know, God has already, he's not figuring out what to do with you. He's not saying, oh, you know, this person made a wrong choice. Now, what do I do with his life? Or what do I do with her life? I wanted her to do, go with plan A. They have gone with plan C. Now, what do I do? Okay, God is not figuring out what he needs to do with us. He's already got it. He's figured it out. And he's already given us uh, the grace that we need to fulfill his plan and purpose. And he's done that in Christ Jesus even before time began. So even before time began, God has a purpose and a grace that he's given to us in Christ Jesus. And his plans for us is very, very good. Okay. So this is a very, very important verse. Maybe you can learn it and you can keep saying it to yourself. For those of you who are struggling uh, to know what God's plan and purpose for your life, for those of you thinking your life is fruitless, you know, hopeless, good for nothing, you can speak this over your uh, life. Look at what another wonderful verse, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Okay, what God told his people in the old covenant. We all know this verse by heart. We have learned it before. Can, can you please read that verse? The next person. Are oh, you a Hindi? Okay. Anyone in English can read it? You want to read it? Take that mic, please. Can you pass him that mic? Thank you. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the truth, thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace. Hebrew shalom, shalom, and not of evil, to give a, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Okay, so God is saying here in this verse, don't get scared of my plan for your life, because the plans that I have for you are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, he says, thoughts of peace, of shalom. What's the meaning of shalom? Peace is not just peace. It's a very comprehensive word. Okay, comprehensive means it's a, it's, it's a word that has so many different meanings. It means peace. It means wholeness. It means uh, prosperity. It means blessing, uh, protection from every harm and danger. So very full word, comprehensive word. Yes, Lucy says it's total well-being. It's total well-being. Okay. So it encompasses all of these things. Okay. So God has plans which encompasses all of these things. He has not, his plans are not evil. His, not, his plans are not hopeless, good for nothing. His plans are plans of peace, of welfare, of wholeness, of prosperity, of blessing. It's plans that gives you a hope and a future okay so god is guaranteeing you okay whenever we buy some thing in the market we ask what is the guarantee right how many years of warranty or guarantee it has god's plan for our life is guarantees eternal okay so he says his plans for us are for good and not for evil so tell your neighbor god has good plans for your life it's plans for your good and not for your evil you're not telling your neighbor you don't like your neighbor. <laughs> okay. So God's plan for your life is good, 
don't run away from God's plan, okay? And his plans gives us a hope and a future. It's, it is something that will take us to a better place than where you are. Another beautiful verse is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. So can uh, one of our online students read Romans chapter 8, verse 28, please? And, and we, we know, know that, that all... Okay, go ahead, brother. Go okay. ahead. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. Thank you, Charles. Amen. It says that we know that all things, what does it say? Some things work for good. Some things work for good. Some things work for evil. Some things might work. Some things might not work. What does this verse say? It says all things, all things work together for Good. Tell, your, tell yourself, everything in my life works for good. Yes, all things work for good. And for whom does all things work for good? Look at your Bibles. To those who love God. Yes, to those who love God and called according to his purpose. purpose. Okay, so everything will work for your good when you love God and you walk according to his purpose. Amen? Okay? So don't be afraid of God's plan for your life. Okay? There is nothing better than God's plan for your life and there's nothing better than doing God's plan for your life. Okay? But even as we go about doing God's plan for our lives, there's something that we need to, um, you know, keep in mind. Okay? Um, before that, the, in your in your in the publication in your textbook page five it says we must discover and pursue god's plan for our life because god's plan for our life is not a mystery what's the meaning of mystery untold something that is hidden something that we don't know sometimes you can ask you hey what is your plan for your life i don't know mm -hmm. You know, what do you think God's plan for your life is? I myself don't know what's my plan for my life. How do I know God's plan for my life? Does God ever reveal his plan? I don't think so. You know, but we read that God's plan for our life is not a mystery, which means God reveals his plan and purpose for our um, lives. Okay. So some people think that they cannot know God's will for their life. It's not true. Okay, God is more than willing to reveal his plan and purpose for your life. So when will God reveal his plan and purpose for your life? Yes, God's plan for your life is not a secret. Thank you. When will God reveal his plan and purpose for your life? Now, since you're studying this book, you'll when you go to sleep in the night, it'll be a heavenly download. Hey, this is my plan. This is my blueprint. Take, read it. Like a story, it'll come. Or you'll hear God's voice saying, this is my plan. How do you know God's plan and purpose for your life? At the time when you are ready, when are you ready? 55 years, 60, 80 years, and almost going to, you know, no, you know, you know where you're going to go. Okay. Yeah, how do we know God's, how do we need to cooperate with God? What is the question I asked? <laughs> What's the question I asked? How do we know God's... Uh, or when will God reveal his plan for our lives? Yes, when will God reveal his plan for our lives? Exactly as simple as that when we ask him. Please ask him. When you want something, you ask, right? So please ask God. God, I heard today that you have a plan and purpose for my life. Please reveal it to me. Simple as that. And just wait and listen, and God will reveal it to you. Some things with God is so simple, but we always complicate it with God, which we shouldn't be um, doing, okay? So, um, um, you know, there are certain things that we need to do, so we need to ask God. And there are nine guideposts that God will use to lead us or to discern means to know his plan for our lives. And those nine are listed out for us in page five. We will study that in detail in the next few classes. Okay. 
Um, so it is recognizing uh, the teaching from God's word so we can know God's plan and purpose for our lives from his word. There are seeds in our life. We will talk about what the seeds are. There is a stirring within. God will stir up our hearts towards something. And through, sorry, through that, he will reveal his plan and purpose for our lives. Then he would, we would recognize God's grace over our life. Um, God will take us to certain circumstances through which we will know his plan and purpose. God will lead us through his spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us. Also, counsel of or people, you know, um, pastors, uh, you know, um, your parents or mentors, you know, teachers, you know, who tell you, hey, I think this is God's plan, will for your life. You can you can pray and ask about it. You know, times and seasons that God takes us through, and patterns of God's working. Okay, I've just listed it out here, but we are going to study each one in details. So don't be um, worried. Okay. So even as God has plans and purpose for our lives and he's willing to reveal it to us in different ways, some of these ways are these nine ways, not just these nine ways, there are more ways, but we just listed out nine. But there's also something that we need to do other than asking God. We also need to partner with God. Okay. We need to partner with God um, and cooperate with God to fulfill his plan and purpose. Now, God does not treat us like puppets on a string. Hey, come here, do this, go here, don't do that. You have to be in Bible college. I'm not pulling you out from here, you know, even if you don't like. No, God does not treat us like puppets or robots, okay? Uh, you know, God is not going to go, ping pong, do this, ting tong, do this, you know, uh, go here, go there. We are not ro robots, but we need to cooperate with God to fulfill his plan and purpose, okay? Look at what Paul says and how he puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 39. 1 Corinthians chapter... Uh, sorry? Uh, chapter 3, verse 9, sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 says, We are God's fellow workers or we are God's co-workers, which means co-workers means what? We read this verse. What does co-workers mean? Can you read that? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Sorry, we didn't read that. Can one of our online students read it? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are both God's workers and you are God's tool, you are God's building. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. Okay, what is the meaning of co-worker? Sahakar, saath mein kaam karna. In Hindi, saath mein kaam karna. Co-workers in English, working alongside somebody. Yes, thank you, Sonia. Working alongside someone. So you've got to do something. You work alongside God. You can't just sit down there like not doing anything and waiting for God to put everything and take you. And, you know, you yes, Charles says we need to partner with God. It's a partnership. Okay, like when you play badminton, cricket, football, it's all partnership. We work alongside each other. Okay, um, so God has a plan. He has designed a plan for us, but he looks, how does he want us to partner with him, work along with him? He wants you and I to execute it here on earth. Okay, that means there's a plan in heaven for you, but God wants you to do it here on earth. Earth. What is the meaning of execute it here on earth? It means he wants you to complete it. He wants you to go about doing it. So, which means you have to be willing to work hard, right? Sometimes we think only in the secular world people work hard. In the ministry, everything is very, very easy. Laid back, you know, aram se karo, koi baat nahi. Chalta hai, business, you know, it's okay, we'll do it, we'll see how it works. No, but God, even in ministry, God wants greater accountability, greater order, greater purpose, no chaos, design, and excellence. That is why when we do something for God, whether you're leading worship, whether you're arranging chairs, whether you're serving tea, do it with 
excellence. Do it with in order. Do it meticulously. Do it neatly and nicely because God wants us to be excellent in everything that we do in the house of God. In the secular world, we are willing to do everything perfect. Others will get thrown out of our job. But when it comes to church, when it comes to God, we can, it's okay if we go 10 minutes late to church, 5 minutes late, half an hour late. It's okay if we sleep in church. You know, it's okay if we don't take our Bibles. But God wants us to be excellent even in the ministry, even in the church, even in our attitude towards serving him, worshipping him, or having our time with God. Uh, him okay so um, we need to be willing to work hard be willing to do our bit we must cooperate with god and um, even as we discover and pursue his plan and purposes for our um, lives okay um now we also saw that god's plan for our lives is not a mystery which means you know it's absolutely pointless if god has written a wonderful plan for our lives and he tells us hey i have a wonderful plan for your life but i'm not going to tell you you find out for yourself i mean that's going to be absolutely pointless because we can't know god's mind uh, it's pointless in god saying hey i have a big dream for your life and god is saying i'm not going to ever let you find out then we tell god god what's the point you know god does not do that for us Okay, so don't walk around or don't go through life as if God's will for your life is mysterious. As if to say you don't know it, only God knows it. He's not revealing to you. He's not letting it go from his mouth. He's keeping it a top secret. You know, uh, it's not. Uh, we're going to see in chapter 2 how we, he's going to reveal his plan and purpose for our um, lives. Okay, uh, and like I said, there are nine ways that we can discern God's plan and purpose for our um, lives. Okay. So, having said all of this, you know, um, we will see that God, you know, even as he has his plan and purpose for our lives, he prepares us to fulfill that plan and purpose. Isn't that amazing that God has his great plan and purpose for our lives? It's not a mystery. He's willing to reveal it to us. And also he shows us in different ways. And also he gives us the grace to fulfill it. Uh, he enables us, strengthens us, empowers us, gives us the fa uh, favor. And he also prepares us for what he wants us to do. Okay, such a loving, such a wonderful God that we uh, 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 have. But for some of us, we don't want preparation. We don't like preparation. We want action. You know, we're a quick generation, fast, you know, instant meals. But Maggie, two minutes. You know, just everything quick and fast. We don't want to take time to cut and buy and wash and clean and cook and the sun. We want everything instant. We're an instant generation. But in God's fulfilling God's plan for our life, it's not going to be God saying, hey, this is my plan for your life. And immediately you jump into action. There is preparation. Okay. Um, in fact, greater the call, greater the preparation. Okay, for example, if you want to be a junior teacher, MA is enough. A degree with MA or BA is enough. But if you want to be a senior professor, PhD is important. So you have to study even more if you want to be a senior lecturer. An MA or BA won't do. Okay, so greater the call, greater the preparation. So you must be wondering, hey, why three years of Bible college? I studied six years, you know, in Bible college. When we're wondering, hey, why three years? One year is more than enough to study this book. See? But God, greater the calling, greater the preparation, greater the time. Okay? So we know it's well in the things of life, even as we are going to go through the preparation process. Uh, uh, process. So, you know, when it comes to doing God's purpose or God's plan for our life, you know, we shouldn't be, hey, God, give it to me quick, fast. I'm ready. I just want to jump into it. I just want to get to it. Okay. But greater the call, greater the preparation. So even as we journey with God, trying to discover his plan and purpose for our lives, you know, it's all about getting ready, preparing for it, fulfilling it. You know, sometimes in our journey, we will make mistakes. Anyone here will not make mistakes? 
I can guarantee you that you and I will make a lot of mistakes even as we go along the way. But God is greater than our mistakes. Amen? Tell your neighbor, God is greater than your mistakes. God can help you overcome your failures. Amen? Okay? And he can help you complete his call, his plan and purpose for your lives. So when we make mistakes, it should not become a dead end. We should not come and say, hey, I made this major mistake. I don't think anyone is forgiving me. I don't even think God can forgive me. Let me just go and do something else. Okay? Don't make your mistakes be like a dead end. Where you're hitting this wall, you can't go beyond that. God can bring down that wall. He can help you overcome your failures and your mistakes. All you need to do is get up. Tell God you're sorry, ask for forgiveness, ask for his grace, strength and help and con continue to run your race. Keep going and God can help you to overcome your mistakes and take you further. But you've got to be willing to let go and let God do it. Okay. Sometimes if you're holding on to your own stubbornness, your own agendas, your own plans, God cannot go ahead and do it. You have to come to a place where you say, God, I can't do it. It's your strength. Like Moses. Moses thought he was born in a palace. Right? And why? And he recognized that in the right time and season, hey, God has brought me to this palace. Even though I'm a Hebrew, I'm a, a part of the slaves in Egypt. But God had a plan in me being in this palace and being raised up as the next prince of Egypt, the next pharaoh of Egypt, for me to deliver my people out of slavery. But what did he do? He jumped ahead of God. He did not wait for God to let him bring about his plan and purpose. And that delayed 40 more years. Till when God called him and he was 80 years. And God, Moses says, God, I can't do it. I can't even speak. What should I go and tell the people? You know, Pharaoh will see me. He'll kill me and blah, blah, blah. He went on. But God says, not you. I will help you. Okay. So we need to be willing to let go and let God um, do it okay now there are some things to keep in mind okay um that any weakness that we cannot conquer any of our weaknesses we all have weaknesses do we all have weaknesses what are some of our weaknesses laziness we love to sleep <laughs> what else is our weaknesses what are some of our weaknesses anger get very angry very fast what else stubbornness online students fear yes fear is a major thing that stops us from doing God's purpose huh? ego yes doubt yeah misunderstanding Jealousy, stubbornness, rebellion, arrogance, pride, selfishness, lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. Thank you, Gertrude. Pride, opposition. So all of these are weaknesses. And if we don't overcome our weaknesses, you know what happened? Satan will use that same weakness against you. So he's waiting. He knows your weaknesses. And he's waiting to use that against you. So any weakness that you are not, <laughs> somebody says, uh, Nelson says, mobile. <laughs> That's so true. Thank you, Nelson. Okay, so yes, you know, any weakness that we cannot conquer will be used by Satan against us. And any unconquered weakness will usually birth tragedies. Your Weaknesses is going to bring your downfall. It's going to be a tragedy in your life. That means it's going to give birth to a tragedy. What is a tragedy? A disaster, a heartbreak, calamity, some problem, something difficult. So when you go through problems and difficulties and there is a failure in your life, there is a breakdown, you know, calamity, don't think, hey, Satan did this in my life. No, it's your weakness that Satan is using against you to birth problems and difficulties in your own life. That is why we need to be careful 
we need to be vigilant about our weaknesses and we need to allow God to deal with our weakness. We need to be honest with ourselves and point out where our weaknesses is and tell God, God, this is my weakness. I realize it. Please help me. Please help me to deal with this in this area. Okay. But if we don't conquer our weakness somewhere as we journey down the road, you know, in our life, it's going to birth tragedies. It's going to cause accidents, problems, unnecessary problems and difficulties in your life. So the greatest enemy, your greatest enemy is not somebody that is outside you, but that is inside you. We learned, right, in, in, uh, in the, laying, uh, the Acts to the, the root of lust, said temptation is when we are drawn away by our own desires, right? So your greatest enemy is not the one who is outside. It's not people. It's not people who hate you. It's not even Satan. Your greatest enemy is those internal, your wrong attitudes, your pet sins, your personal pet sins, some sins which you love. Pet sins. You know what is pet? You have a cat or a dog as a pet, a parrot as your pet. You love them. So there are personal pet sins that we have. We just love them. We just have them in us. It's our own weaknesses which are our greatest enemies and not those outside. Okay? And your greatest obstacle in your life is not usually birth. Uh, sorry. Your greatest obstacle is usually birth out of your own doing, out of your own weaknesses. Okay, we like to blame Satan for everything, but very often our greatest obstacles are those that we birth ourselves. Sometimes it's because of our pride that can be a hindrance. It can be jealousy, it can be hatred that can become a hindrance. Okay, so whatever uh, mistakes we make, it delays God's plan and purpose from fulfilling in our lives. Okay, so some of you seated here, you must, you might be saying, hey, you know, I have made mistakes because of my own weaknesses. I have made wrong choices. Maybe you're saying I wasted five years of my life as a result of that. And you're just feeling so bitter. You're feeling bad. But I have good news for you. God is greater than those mistakes. God is greater than those weaknesses. God is greater than those five years that you have wasted. Amen? Okay? God is greater than those five years that you may have lost. He can still accelerate things. He can still speed up things. He can still help you to accomplish things in your life. He can still bring you to the place you know, where you would have been five years before and doing what you had to do. So God is greater than our time. Amen. God is greater than our time. God is greater than our mistakes. And God is there to help us. Okay. Um, but thank God our mistakes are not greater than God. But God is greater than our mistakes. God is greater than the time that we have lost and so on. Okay, so if you have spent 35 years, of your, uh, 35 years of your life, 45 years of your life, 55 years of your life, and you say, hey, whatever, you know, it's too late. Um, but even as you go through this study, I want you to make a decision in your heart, you know, saying, God, whatever years of my life are spent, I want to use it to serve your purposes. I want to serve you. I want to fulfill your plan and purpose for your life. Whatever is gone, is gone. God, I cannot do anything about it. I just leave it behind. And I just want to fulfill your purpose for my life, the remaining years of my life. Okay? It's interesting because, you know, Paul, when he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, he was about 33 to 35 years. You know, 33 years or 35 years of his life had already gone and he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Now, Paul must have thought after he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus and all the wonderful revelation he heard about Jesus Christ, he would have told God, God, why didn't you give it to me 10 years back when I was a small boy playing marbles near the tree? You know, if you had revealed yourself to me, you know, what more I could have done in these past 33 years of my life? But at the age of 33 or 35, God reveals uh, him to Paul. But look at what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. 
Paul says, I have finished my course. I have run the race. I have finished my course. I have done what God wants me to do. Okay. Can somebody read that? Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8 from your Bible. Second Timothy, oh, it's here. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Can somebody read that, please? Or I'm already uh, in purpose. Yeah, read, read. Or I'm already being poured out, poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure, departure is at hand. I have fought, I have fought, 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 fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid, laid up, up, laid up, up for me. The crown is righteousness of righteousness of righteousness, which which the Lord, the, the righteous judge, sorry, the righteous judge will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved His appearing. appearing. Amen. So, what does Paul say here? He says that I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith, and I'm ready to go. I have done what God has purposed and planned for me. So it was just after 33, 35 years of his life. So some of you here, you know, might have completed 33, 35 years of your life. You say, what more? You know, I've but God has plans and purposes, and He can complete what you know you feel that should have been done the last 33 years of your life okay so it does not matter where in life you are what stage in life you are you know if you're willing to learn this that if you will get to an understanding of this uh, yeah 50 years of your life okay some of you are 50 years the online students you know but if you're willing to say god i'm here to fulfill your plan and purpose um you know i'm ready to do what you have for me and I believe that life is going to be exciting and you're going to complete what you have planned and purpose for me, even if it's going to just two, take two or three years. How many years did Jesus do his ministry? Three years. What age did he start? 30 years. So don't be in a, in a rush to begin ministry. You know, what God can do in, um, for somebody else's life in 30 years, he can do that in three years for you. Okay. So. Uh, look at what um, uh, Second Timothy chapter one verse nine says. Can somebody read that, please? Second Timothy chapter one verse nine. Somebody from the online student. Yes, Lucy, go ahead and read. Second Timothy one nine. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Jesus Christ before time began. Amen. Amen. So God is not looking for silver vessels. That means great, talented people. He's just looking for vessels or people who are willing to submit and surrender, who are willing to say yes to God, willing to fulfill his plan for, for your life. So yes, just be willing, ready, and yielded, because God is looking for such simple vessels who are yielded to him so that he can pour out the greatness of his power and strength so we can know that whatever we are doing is not out of our power our greatness but his greatness his power and his um, strength okay so god is counting on you he's not looking on your abilities he's just looking at your willingness um, and he is going to give you the power to work through you to get the job done okay so an important thing to keep, another important thing to keep in mind is even as we go on this long journey of life, that Satan will do his best to stop us from fulfilling God's plan and purpose for your life. But, you know, be sure that God is there for you. You know, a God-given dream will always face demonic opposition. A God-given dream will always face demonic opposition, oppression. Satan will try to bring in delays, but you need to know that delays are not always from God. Sometimes the delays can also be from Satan. 
okay? But we need to continue to run our race and we can fulfill God's plan and purpose for our lives, okay? We'll continue this in the next class, okay? We'll stop here. Anyone has any questions? Anyone has any questions? It's just a little more and we can continue next class. Okay, there are no questions. We'll end class. Thank you, everyone, for joining class. Discover God's plan and purpose for your life. And if you have discovered it and you've stopped because of your mistakes, you know, just surrender, submit. Say, God, I'm willing to do the plan and purpose. Just take me, fill me with your power, empower me with your grace. I'm ready to go. Okay, everyone ready to go? Everyone ready to go for your break, ready to go and fulfill God's plan and purpose for your life. Okay, thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. God bless you. See you next week. Amen. Thank you, Bim. Thank you. Thank you, online students.